Good morning. Welcome to Our Lady of Lourdes and welcome to all of you watching on the live stream. We're glad that you're with us this morning. Just a friendly reminder to please silence or put your phones on vibrate, please, so they're not ringing during Mass. Our priest this morning will be Father Bill. At this time, I invite you to please rise and join in singing our procession. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. Together, as we gather once again to celebrate Eucharist, we take a moment to reflect on our lives, our lives this past week, and we ask the Lord for forgiveness and mercy for the times when we have sinned. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, you bring us new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you nourish us with your body and your blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of the world. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we
Make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. First reading, a reading from the second book of Kings. Naaman went down and plunged into the Jordan seven times at the word of Elijah, the man of God. His flesh became again like the flesh of a little child, and he was cleaned of his leprosy. Naaman returned with his whole retinue to the man of God. On his arrival, he stood before Elijah and said, Now I know there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Please accept a gift from your servant. Elijah replied, As the Lord lives, whom I serve, I will not take it. And despite Naaman's urging, he refused. Naaman said, if you will not accept, please let me, your servant, have two more loads of earth, for I will no longer offer holocaust or sacrifice to any other god except the, to the Lord. The word of the Lord. Ends 
of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into song, sing praise. My Lord has revealed to the nations his saving A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David's. Such is my gospel for which I am suffering, even to the point of chains like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I bear with everything for the sake of those who are chosen, so that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus, together with eternal glory. This saying is trustworthy. If we have died with him, we shall also live with him. If we persevere, we shall also reign with him. But if we deny him, he will deny us. If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to Luke. As Jesus continued his journey to Jerusalem, he traveled through Samaria and Galilee. As he was entering a village, ten lepers met him. They stood at a distance from him and raised their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And when he saw them, he said, Go show yourselves to the priests. As they were going, they were cleansed. And one of them, realizing he had been healed, returned, glorifying God in a loud voice. And he fell at the feet of Jesus and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus said in reply, Ten were cleansed, were they not? Where are the other nine? Has none but this foreigner returned to give thanks to God? Then he said to him, Stand up and go. Your faith has saved you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the ancient Mideast, I don't know if there was any disease that was more feared and dreaded than leprosy. The people of the time considered it highly contagious, and perhaps because of their hygiene it was for them. 
But they were afraid, not only because of the disfigurement of the people, it wasn't like they were off-putting, I mean, although that was probably true as well, but they were afraid that they would catch it themselves. And so to be a leper in the ancient Mideast was almost a fate worse than death itself. You see, according to Jewish law, and this was, this sounds harsh, but it was to protect the community, lepers were required to live by themselves apart from everyone else in their own community, apart from family and friends. Um, they were strictly forbidden from entering the temple in Jerusalem or any synagogue. They w couldn't go to their own homes. They couldn't go to markets. They couldn't go to places of work. And they were required to either ring a bell or yell out leper when a non-leprous person approached within any uh, nearness. They were required by law to announce that they had leprosy. In other words, they were forced to live apart from family, waiting out their days, dependent upon the charity of others. If people would sort of bring and leave food near their encampment. Now, with that type of existence, in today's gospel, Jesus heals 10 of these lepers. But why does only one come back to say thanks when this, this was a, truly a life transforming event for them? Jesus sends them to the priests, which was appropriate because in Judaism, the priest was the one who declared a person unclean or unfit to be part of the community. And therefore, the priest was also the one to readmit the person. So if they were cured of leprosy, the priest had to sort of put his stamp of approval on it. But given what Jesus had done for them, you know, you'd sort of think that they all would have just run back to Jesus saying, thank you, thank you, God, thank you so much. But they didn't. In the first reading from the second book of Kings, we see Naaman, who was not a Jew at all. He was a pagan with leprosy. And his governor or king sends him to Israel because he hears that there's somebody there that might be able to cure him. And so Naaman goes, Elisha the prophet says, go bathe in the Jordan River seven times. Naaman says, forget that nonsense. We got better rivers than the Jordan where I come from. But finally he does it and he's cured. And the, the, the gratitude, the awe that Naaman shows I mean, he wants to give Elisha everything, and Elisha won't take it. And so finally, Naaman takes two mule loads, I'm not sure how much that is, of dirt back to his country because he says, no longer will I worship any god but your Lord. And so he wanted to be able to do it on the ground of Israel. Now, the one in the gospel who comes back to say thanks to Jesus is a Samaritan. And that is very, very important to the story. <clears throat> you see, Samaritans and Jews hated each other. Just to give you a little background, just <clears throat> to say, because the Samaritans always come across as the bad guys in the Gospels. That's because they didn't write the Gospels. <laughs> the other side did. But the... the uh, You've heard of King David, you had Saul, Solomon, I mean, excuse me, Saul, David, Solomon. After King Solomon died, the country split into two, and there became a northern kingdom and a southern kingdom. And this was around 900 and something BC. And so the northern kingdom had 10 tribes. These were the sons of Jacob, the 12 tribes of Israel. The northern kingdom called Israel had 10 kingdoms, their, their capital was Samaria. 
The southern kingdom just had two tribes, Benjamin and Judah, and they were called Judah. Their capital was Jerusalem. And see, all the prophets that wrote were all from the south. That's why the, the Samaritans didn't fare too well in the writing. Anyway, they hated each other. And Samaria and Jerusalem were only about 35 miles apart from each other. I mean, it's like from here to the airport. They were close, but they were dreaded enemies. Again, in 950 or so BC, the Assyrians came and wiped out the northern kingdom. And then about 100 years later, they came and did the same to the southern kingdom. But the northern kingdom was taken into Assyria and they started to um, intermarry with the Assyrians so that their bloodline was no longer pure. They didn't have the temple in Jerusalem to worship in, worship in and so they set up temples in Samaria with a golden calf as a symbol of God. They rejected all the books of the Old Testament except the Law of Moses, the first five books, the Pentateuch, because all the other books had been written by the South. So these people, even though they were all technically Jews, they hated each other. And if you have trouble thinking, well, how could people just 35 miles from each other hate each other so much, I would refer you to the Sunni and Shiite Muslims in the Middle East, I would refer you to the Catholics and Protestants in Northern Ireland. And today in countless countries where one group of people, one nationality practices virtually genocide, it happens. The Jews and the Samaritans hated each other. And so these 10 lepers are together, the Samaritan forced to live with these other Jews and the other Jews probably not liking the Samaritan, but their leprosy they had in common. And so they were off by themselves. And while Jesus is making his way down south towards Jerusalem, he's coming through Samaria and the Galilee, and these lepers see Jesus. And they say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on us, heal us. And Jesus says, go, show yourself to the priests. And they go, and on the way, they realize that they're cured. And the one comes back to Jesus to give thanks. That is the Samaritan. And I think that's somewhat important because why didn't the others come back? And we're not told that, we don't know. But I think the reason it was such a big deal for the Samaritan is this was one of those hated Southern Jews that had cured him. He must not have expected much from this guy. I mean, they hated each other. They wouldn't give each other the time of day. And yet Jesus had cured him. And I think his expectations were somewhat low. And so when Jesus cured him, he was just knocked out of the water. He was just amazed that this person would do that for him, an enemy. I think expectations have a lot to do with whether we're grateful for things or not. I mean, if we expect somebody to do something for, one, for us, I mean, if you got manners, you say thank you, but you know, it's sort of expected. I remember when I was in a high school seminary and college, and even I think as a young priest, I had a godmother who would always send me two checks a year. She would send me one check for my birthday. I, of course, this is prehistoric, but it was five or 10 bucks, I don't know, something like that. And then she would send me one for Christmas, which is, I think if I remember correctly, 20 bucks. Mm. Well, every year it was like clockwork, you know, and my mama didn't raise no dummies, so I always wrote back and said, thank you, because I wanted to keep it coming. <laughs> <laughs> but every year I just sort of expected it, you know. And one year, uh, when my godmother had become elderly and infirm, uh, I didn't get a check. And I remember after my birthday thinking, 
I didn't get my check. My check. See, I, I sort of expected it. I mean, it was, you know, it always happened. I, I was thinking, what did she forget? Did the post office not deliver it? What happened? It's mine. Well, it seems to me that when we have low expectations, our gratitude, I mean, we might say thank you and mean it, but it's not like, wow. For this Samaritan, it was wow. This enemy gave him his life back. I think the Samaritan was absolutely shocked and overawed by what Jesus had done for him. And so we come to today, to us. What has this got to do with us? Well, it seems to me that we can become so accustomed to God giving us gifts. I mean, he's given us everything we have. I mean, he's given us our life, our faith, uh, the standard of living we have compared to 90% of people in the world. He's given us all of this. I mean, you and I didn't say, uh, excuse me, God, but I'd like to be born in the United States. And that didn't happen, okay? So it's gift. And I think we can become so, so accustomed to, to everything that God has given us that we might say thanks, but it doesn't exactly knock our socks off. And so today, I'm suggesting that we maybe become more like the Samaritan and look at God and say, wow. Look at God and say, man, it's incredible what you've given me. Not just focusing on what's wrong, you know, our problems or things, because those come too. It's part of life. But simply to sit back and say, wow, you are a good and gracious God. And like he said to the Samaritan, God will say to us, be healed. Your faith has saved you. Together now, let's profess the faith that we share. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. And the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in the Father's love and mercy, we now pray. For Pope Francis, Bishop Dolan, Father John, Father Bill, and all priests and deacons, that they will continue to be the voice of truth, mercy, and the love of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish, they will truly live as God's people producing spiritual fruit to his glory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The life of every human person from conception to natural death will be enshrined and protected in our laws. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who lack meaning, purpose, or good direction in life, that Jesus will draw them to, will draw close to them with his love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the ill of our parish, that they may be healed. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the recently deceased of our parish, especially for Don Carmian, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have given us everything we are and everything we have. If we could ask one more thing, give us a deep and abiding appreciation for all these gifts. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Amen. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings that through these acts of devotedness, 
we may pass over to the glory of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image and set us over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever to praise you in your mighty works through Jesus, your Son. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. And giving thanks, he broke it gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat his bread and drink his cup, we proclaim the death of until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her 
to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, with John, our Bishop, with all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Pray now with confidence to the Father in the way that Jesus himself taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be.
Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. First of all, a Bernadette's Brew is open again after Mass for your caloric pleasure. Um, also on October 15th, um, we invite you to join members of America Needs Fatima for a rosary rally outside of the church. Uh, details in the bulletin. On October 20th, from 3 to 4.30, invite you to join Caitlin and the choir. Um, they're going to open, uh, host an open choir night. So if you'd like to just listen to them practice or maybe uh, join the choir, there's no pressure to do that if you come to that. But that's uh, the 20th from 3 to 4.30. Uh, the Catholic Daughters are hosting a pasta dinner on the 29th of this month. Tickets are available outside. If you do any ministry uh, in this parish, or really in any other, uh, you need to complete your online um, safe environment training for this year. And if you're having trouble with the computer or anything, uh, Caitlin and Zeke will be available on the 12th and or the 14th in the hall to help you go through that process. We would ask you, though, if, to bring a laptop, an iPad, or something 
because if everybody comes and wants to get on the same computer, it ain't going to be pretty. Um, <laughs> also, um, there'll be a legacy planning seminar coming up and outside uh, this weekend and every weekend through this month, the Knights of Columbus will be out with their Tootsie Rolls. That is a, a fundraiser nationwide by the Knights of Columbus uh, for people with intellectual uh, disabilities or challenges. So we invite you, please, uh, whether you like Tootsie Rolls or not, <laughs> put the money in. <laughs> See, I made fun of the Tootsie Rolls last week because I said it was actually started by the American Dental Association. <laughs> and, well, God got me because on Monday, not eating a Tootsie Roll, by the way, I broke a tooth, so. <laughs> I didn't know he took this that seriously. <laughs> anyway, the prayer of St. Michael. St. Michael, Michael will be our angel, angel defend us in battle, be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.